26 minutes before the hour of 8 o'clock and we're debating the south thing here you know we say if you're renting in south also you're from south you're from south it doesn't matter you know we want to chat with a gentleman, a, a very esteemed gentleman this morning, uh, former prime minister, uh, lawyer, um, activist, father, um, leader. So many hats he has worn and can still continues to wear. And of course, it's, it's, it is indeed a pleasure to chat with this gentleman, former prime minister of Trinidad and Tobago, Mr. Basdeo Pandey. Welcome to the Now Morning Show. Thank you. And I forgot that you were also an actor in your day. Well, I acted in a couple of plays and films and so on. <coughs> but not a professional actor. Anyway. <laughs> I'm sure you were quite good. Um, we thought we would have seen you at your Red Beret on this morning. Ah, uh, yes. I've got to look for it. <laughs> 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 Mr. Pandey, you were the first East Indian and the first Hindu to hold the post of Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago. Is this something that you still look back on with a sense of pride? Not really, because first of all, I regard myself as a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, I remember when I became Prime Minister, somebody said, you've got an Indian Prime Minister. And I said that the only Indian Prime Minister I know is the fellow in India, <laughs> not me. I am a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago who became the prime minister. You know, we <laughs> want to we want to talk about independence and what does independence mean to Basdeo Pandey? Well, I am a bit disappointed because um, we have spent hundreds of billions of dollars and we have failed to provide our people with the basic necessities of life, food, clothes and shelter. You know, Mr. Pandey, would you care to elaborate a little bit more because in terms of your perspective, let us hear and you would like to share a little bit more of your perspective in terms of what you're, you're, you're speaking about right now. Well, I believe that the, the first function of the government of any state is to ensure that every one of its citizens have access to food, clothes, and shelter. And in Trinidad and Tobago, despite the fact that we've spent an enormous amount of money, poverty is rampant in this country. There are people who don't have food, they don't have clothes, they don't have shelter. And uh, I think that's disappointing after so many years. So in your opinion, Mr. Pandey, we have in some way moved away from the um, famous independent speech that was delivered by the late Eric Williams? Uh-huh, yes. <clears throat> what do you want to know about that? In terms of, let's talk about the political and social aspirations that was described in that speech. Um, are we on the right path or have we moved away? We have ambitions, we have goals, but they cannot be achieved in my humble and respectful view because of the political system. The political system does not allow us to progress in the way that we ought to have, having regard to the fact that we had enormous uh, resources. What about in terms of having a joint approach, Mr. Pandey, in terms of both sides having a, 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 a sit down and both perspectives being heard on both sides and having more uh, a united approach going forward? That is not possible under the present system. The present system is one of conflict. That is to say, the opposition is there not to help the government to do well, but to make sure that they do so badly that the opposition becomes a government in the next election. It's a battle between the two. The system is like that. 
That's why I keep calling for constitutional change and a change in the political system that remove that kind of conflict that exists under the present system. Well, Mr. Pandey, the, the independence constitution was revised in 1976 to achieve republic status. Is there a need for any further revision to this? But of course, in 1975, I think it was, um, the, the then government introduced something called the, the Republican Constitution. But the Republican Constitution was a, a change in form, not in substance. The, the Westminster system remained. And it is that Westminster system of having an opposition and a government both fighting one another to stay in power, that is our problem. We have to change that constitution to suit the needs of our people, a divided people. A divided people cannot have a divided um, constitution or a divided parliament. Mr. Mr. Pandey, good morning to you. Uh, this is Rokas here. It's a pleasure to be speaking with you. Talking about the Westminster system, and I know that I, I'm wondering if it's the system or the people that we need to change, because I wonder that the, the opposition is meant to keep the government in check, as in to be able to say we have checks and balances that we're doing on behalf of the people. That is what the, the system is supposed to be. Uh, so is it, is it that we have a personal responsibility as people to make sure that the systems that we use in, that we use them for the greater good? if they can be used. But if the system itself tells you it is one of conflict between the opposition and the government, why should one help the other when the government is struggling not to go into the opposition and the opposition is struggling to go into the government? It's, it's a built-in conflict mm. in a society that's divided. Okay, so you're suggesting that we remove the entire system and we come up with a whole new system? Uh, we have to find a system that is suitable to us, having regard to our historical antecedents, having regard to all the physical conditions that obtain in the country. And we can do that, but it means changing the Constitution. And neither side wants to change the Constitution. But because Mr. Pandey, them, but Mr. Pandey if, we, if we come down to the ground level of it all, right, and we're saying that the people, the, the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago have the final say in whether they want to have this division or not. Like, we have the opportunity to, to vote. We have the right to vote. It's, it's our franchise, our right. And do we take that responsibility seriously as a nation, do you think? The people of Trinidad and Tobago have no power to do that under this constitution and the way it's operated. Every constitution is going to be a battle of division between the ethnic and racial and this group and that group and so on and so forth. And uh, therefore, where is the voice of the people? It is only if you change the constitution to give the people a voice and separate the, the executive from the legislature then the people have freedom. Mr. Pandey, I have, a, I have a, a curious question for you. You know, you were the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago. How come you didn't, you didn't make these changes when you were in power? Uh, the reason is, in order to reform the Constitution, you need special majorities. You have to have, a, in some cases, a two-thirds, mm -hmm. and in other cases, a three-quarters majority. There are only three Prime Ministers in this country that had that. And that was Dr. Williams, uh, Mr. Robinson, and Kamala Prasad Vicesa. There are only three times that the parliament had an opportunity to reform the constitution. Very interesting. Now I know, I mean, Mr. Pandey, it always appeared, it always appeared to me as a young person growing up that even though you and Mr. Manning were political rivals, that you all seemed to be you know, friendly, off, off of the, the podiums, your were, you were, you know, colleagues at the end of the well, day? Well, uh, first of all, my own attitude is that the people in Parliament are not my enemies. Right. They may belong to another party. They are, my, they are my political opponents. But they are human beings and we are friends. 
Mr. Manning and I are friends. But if we meet in Parliament and I have an argument to put forward, I will put, put it forward fearlessly. Uh, here, uh, under the present regime, there seemed to be a kind of antagonism, an, an antagonism that continues to breed the division in the society. That is sad. You hear me good still? Hello, Mr. Pandey? Yeah. All right, I'm not sure what's going on with the technology. Um, all right, but yeah, I, I understand what you're saying in terms of the system, breeding the antagonism, and we're going to have to, I don't know how we're going to see about fixing that. We need to, I, I'm wondering, like, if, you, if you're saying that you guys were friends off, off the um, outside of Parliament, were you not able to say, well, let's convince the, the team on the other side? Can we convince them to be a part of this and get that to this major, majority? Why should they do that? For the country? <laughs> no, no. How do they do that? There is a government in power that has control over everything. It has control over the treasury. It determines how much money it will give us itself, and it spends the money and is accountable to itself. Where are you going? What, what happens to the opposition after that? And it doesn't matter which um, party is in power. You see, so then are we really independent? That's the, the question that we have to ask at this point then. Sorry, uh, what question you have in mind? Is are we are we really and truly independent? Are we really able to stand on our own two feet for, and think for ourselves and make decisions for ourselves as Trinbagonians? But listen, do the facts not speak for themselves? We have had independence for so many years, and we have had an enormous amount of resources, and yet Dr. Williams spoke of production, tolerance, and, uh, and, uh, and um, discipline. Discipline. And all we have got in Trinidad and Tobago is corruption, waste, and mismanagement. No, man. The political system. Goes. No, man, Mr. Pandey. Don't tell me. You can't tell me we don't have nothing. We have no hope. We have no hope, at least. We have. Um, I believe that if there is someone who is capable of mobilizing the young people who are outside of both political parties and who are incidentally in the majority. If there is someone who can mobilize them to get into parliament with the required majority, only then the constitution can be changed peacefully. Otherwise, otherwise, History is replete with examples. And we don't want, we don't want that otherwise. want change. And they cannot get it peacefully. They resort to violence. All right. Well, to speak to that, examples of that. Mr. Pandey, I want to thank you so much for joining us this morning and for sharing how you feel about, you know, where we are 59 years later. And I want to wish you a happy independence. And I hope that we're able to see a little bit of light at the end of that tunnel. Yeah, I, I see some light at the end of the tunnel but it is a train coming in the opposite Jesus direction and ages. mr pandey enjoy the rest of your day thank, <laughs> thank you, you so sir. much for joining oh, us what can i say